From hairpins to light bulbs, it's time for the seven everyday objects that games have ruined for us. With their mix of the real and the fantastical games interweave fiction and reality with ease. We, on the other hand, with our limited intellect, really don't. Spend a little too long in Fallout's wasteland or other sprawling open worlds and our brains decide some rather odd things about real life. Details on buildings become handholds for a keen climber as long as you put your hood up and backpacks become bottomless repositories for storing every bit of junk we find. And by find, I mean steal. From hair accessories to food, here are seven everyday objects that games have completely destroyed for us. The wasteland is a dangerous place in Fallout. Rad roaches, feral ghouls, vampiric blood bugs. In a world where everything wants to kill you, you have to find your joy somewhere. And that happiness, for a lot of us, comes in the shape of a little piece of twisted metal. The humble bobby pin, known as a Kirby grip if you live in the UK, means lockpicking and the ultra satisfying act of hacking your way into exactly where you don't belong. Nice. This is great news for your in-game wanderer, allowing you to grab even more precious loot from behind locked doors and inside safes. So the only problem is when the temptation carries over into the real world and you spot a bobby pin on a table. Or a kitchen. Or the bathroom. Or the living room. Or a stranger on the train's hair. I mean, I mean bag, obviously bag. So, yes, you just can't help picking them up. Part of your brain says locks, and before you know it, you've got a collection of hair MacGuffins and not enough special skills to use them for anything but fixing your do. The usefulness of bobby pins is just one of the many ways that games lie to us. Just picture the scene. Matt, imagine you're not feeling well. But I'm fine. Just pretend. But I'm fine. Ow! So, what will make you feel better? I don't know, like working with someone else? Painkillers? Bed rest? So, food and games like cake in Portal is a delicious lie. It turns out that if you want to feel better, all you need to do is find a pineapple lurking on some poor guard, who knows where it's been hiding, and scoff it to fix all your health problems. From flesh wounds to almost being decapitated, it doesn't really seem to matter. Excuse me, can I get some help here? Certainly, sir. Sorry about the wait! Ah! Ah! Whether it's Skyrim's cheese wheels or Dishonored's blue-jawed hagfish eggs, it turns out that food is nearly as good as a trip to A&E. You can, of course, use video games as an excuse for yet another cheeseburger meal. But just remember that games don't seem to take cholesterol into account or the fact that you found that burger in a trash can. On the flip side, though, it's never a good idea to drink alcohol or smoke in games. They might be teaching you to eat whatever you want, but booze and cigarettes nearly always have negative results. A little like real life. For example, drinking rum in Assassin's Creed Black Flag will mean Edward will stagger once he gets up from his barstool, making it exceptionally difficult to climb up buildings if you can't see straight. And uh, let's not talk about Sea of Thieves. I'm allergic to pineapples. Picture the scene. You're scoping out an enemy encampment in your game of choice. The good news is that you've packed your binoculars or perhaps your very useful DSLR. Not only do these mean you can see things with crystal clarity, but they'll also helpfully tag everything in sight. Look long enough and every single person will be handily highlighted to make sure you can stealth or shoot your way through with ease. From Far Cry to MGS5 to Sniper Elite, these zooming devices make life easier. Until, of course, you leave your screen behind. Yep, it turns out that once you're away from your PC, binoculars and cameras are just a bit normal. If you're lucky, you might see something a little bit closer, but there's definitely no directional microphone or anything to say it's safe to sneak up on people. You'll also find that sitting anywhere with a set of binoculars fastened to your face might draw some unwanted attention. You might think you look all suave and cool and Metal Gear Solid, but that guy in the bushes with the telescope look really is inadvisable. You learned that the hard way, didn't you? I was bird watching. The suspicious nature of binoculars aside, all game systems manage to sneak into our heads while we're wandering. We've done a whole video on the gaming powers we wish we had in real life. 
and sometimes you just can't help switching them on mentally. Who wouldn't want a gravity gun for reaching for a remote control or a heart rate tracker to make sure that Matt is at his most peaceful before scaring the life out of him? You ever wonder if this whole thing is some kind of psychological experiment? Like we're all just pawns in somebody's twisted game? Herbs. In real life, they're only there to bring a stew to life or to add some zing to your hoivos rancheros. But in games, they're a pathway to a world of alchemical secrets, of concoctions, poisons, potions and balms. Have you picked up a case of the Collywobbles in Morrowind? Just rub some chokeweed on your damage bits and you'll be back to full strength in no time at all. Are you about to fight a fiend in The Witcher 3? Pick some mistletoe, mix yourself some relic oil and rid the world of one more magical creature. Now, of course, herbs in real life do have their uses. Pain-killing opiates come from poppies, aspirin comes from willow bark, but picking herbs in games is more satisfying and rewarding than trying to do the same in the IRL wilderness, or, you know, someone else's back garden. Where, where did you get those? It's not stealing if it grows, that's just nature. You can't steal from nature. Yes, yes, you absolutely can. But it does lead us on to our next point. Picking herbs in games feels lovely. We're not sure if it's the joy of finding the exact ingredient you need, the completionism of having a backpack overflowing with crash fibre and wickwheat, or the satisfying shump of physically plucking the leaves. But it's all much nicer than grabbing supermarket basil from the fresh food aisle. Combine that with their in-game usefulness and you can see why real-life herbs are so disappointing. <coughs> You're right, do you want some parsley for that? Nice bit of basil. No, I'm fine. They're good herbs, Louise. I'm fine. Try my medicinal herbs. Games love verticality. From Tomb Raider to Far Cry, Assassin's Creed to Metal Gear Solid, games want us to constantly clamber up the nearest building or rock face and damn the consequences. While this means great things in games, as your stomach lurches and Lara digs in yet another pickaxe, what happens in real life is significantly less fun. There you are walking through town on a Saturday morning, only to see the light hit the nearby church in a certain way and suddenly light up the handholds that will take you to the sky. In these cases, it's important to remember that you are not the kind of person who stands on the edge of buildings for daredevil Instagram posts and that actually being safe is a different kind of cool. But Matt, the risk, the spinning synchronization camera, the feathers. If that hooded coat appears again, I'm literally going to burn it, Louise. Fine, so maybe it turns out that those handholds are just architecture. But it's still incredible that you can look at a skyline and see a route across and up. You could always blur the lines even more, head to Venice or Rome and get some Jesper kid in your ears. I would suggest staying on the ground and having an espresso or gelato though. You might even be able to legally head up some stairs to get that view out of your head without testing the physics of diving into a flower bed from 300 feet. And if you thought our last entry was... What are you doing? What? I turned off over encumbrance. I hate it. Louise, in this show, we respect the laws of spatial relativity. Anyway, given that most games not made by Bethesda hate over-encumbrance too, backpacks are a real problem when it comes to the real-life fake-life divide. Not only can you apparently carry every crafting ingredient ever made in a small Jansport, you can also store an arsenal worthy of John Wick in a space the size of a popcorn bucket. Med kits, weaponry, potions, you name it, if it exists in a game, you can shove it in your backpack. This means your expectations when it comes to your day-to-day -day work bag are just a little skewed. When it comes to games that do get it right though, the first one that springs to mind is Resident Evil 4. Constantly faced with a fixed amount of storage space, half the horror here is about finding room for all your favourite weapons as well as comboing up herbs and positioning it all like weapon Tetris. Only then can you truly tackle the last Plagueis. 
Lighting in games plays an important role, not just so you can see everything that's going on, but also to help you understand where to go next. Rather than a much less subtle giant glowing arrow, games designers will happily light a corridor that they want you to wander down and then block off the rest of the world in darkness. It's something that after years of gaming, we've grown absolutely used to. Unfortunately, what that means is that if you don't think you're in the real world, you might end up in completely the wrong place. There you are, trying to find a friend's house on a badly lit street. And despite the fact that you know it's a little further down, you find yourself standing at the only gate lit by a streetlight. A useful tip here would be to carry a torch to make sure you're always a portable source of light, making it easier for you to find your own way rather than sticking to every light bulb you pass like a moth. The torch didn't help me much last time. That was the Yeti. I had nothing at all to do with it. You're so blamey. Louise, blame more like. I hate you. And that's it. The seven everyday objects that games have made significantly less exciting. Let us know in the comments if we've missed something that drives you up the wall, sometimes literally, and hit that like button if you also have a problem with real life backpacks. If you haven't done it already, subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. And if you already have, don't forget to hit that notification bell to make sure you know exactly when a new video arrives. 